Sam, my dude, saying Sam, here, and today I'm going to be doing some Fire Emblem content that's a little different to my usual summoning videos. I originally was going to be talking about some new staff refines I'd like to see, but with Brave Veronica getting a re refine next month, I figured I'd wait till after her refines release, and instead talk about some refines that have already happened previously. I've been looking at all the weapon refineries recently, and while we've had some good ones, there are quite a few that really need more of a boost. Which is why I came up with the idea for this series, which I'll be calling Refinery. I'll be going over five different units that I think really could use an extra boost in order to turn them into a whole new unit. So, without further ado, let's start off with the list with my first character. Starting off the list is a unit that I'm sure everyone knows as one of the main lords in Fey, Prince Alphonse of Asgard. So Alphonse actually got one of the better weapons out of the Asgard trio, but unfortunately the triangle adept aspect of his Ravine left much to be desired. Most of the time, people, myself included, either usually run a stat boost on Fort Vanger or run a different weapon entirely. The brazen attack defense aspect of his weapon is really good though, so I decided to keep that effect and upgrade it so that it activates below 100% HP, and also boosts his resistance as well. I also added a slaying effect so it's easier for him to proc specials. With Alphonse Effect Refine, I decided to give him an effect that guarantees follow-up attacks, as well as a conditional null follow-up if his health is below 100%, for he loses 6 damage after combat. I don't know if I made him too strong with this Refine, but hey, autogen units need all the help they can get, and there's plenty more broken weapons throughout this list. I'm really hoping at some point we'll get some exclusive skills too, so like Open the Future will be available on all of the Alphonse variants. Open the Future would give Alphonse a much needed boost, and would also combo really well with this weapon. It would keep him healthy during combat, and then after combat he'll lose 6 HP and will be in range to activate his weapon again. Overall, this weapon is a major upgrade from his original weapon, but it still takes inspiration from its original effects, except it gets rid of Triangle Adept and then stuffs him with a bunch of other skills instead. Next up is a unit that is a personal favourite of mine, and is the only unit on this list that I've managed to plus 10 as of the making of this video, and it's none other than Camilla from Fire Emblem Fates. Camilla's original weapon and refine is based on her exclusive skill and fates, Rose's Thorns, which allowed adjacent allies to Camilla to deal 3 extra damage and take 1 less damage during combat. In Fae this translated into Camilla gaining 4 attack and speed while she's within 2 spaces of a mounted unit, and also grants them 3 attack and speed points as well. I don't think this was too bad of a skill at the time, but now there's so many other better weapons out there, so I think it's time to upgrade her weapon, so now she has a weapon truly benefiting a Norian Royal. Camilla's stat line is a jack of all trades type, since she doesn't really have a standout stat, but all her stats are fairly good. So I decided to give her plus 3 defense as a start in order to balance out her defense and resistance. I also made her a lot more bulky by neutralizing her effective against flyers bonus. Finally for the base weapon, I wanted to reference her Malignite class by giving her weapons the properties of the skill Trample. In Fates, Malignites would deal 5 more damage against unmounted units, so I decided to incorporate this into Fae by making Camilla effective against infantry and armoured units, making her incredibly unique as the only weapon currently effective against infantry units is the Poison Dagger. To end off the refine, we've seen a lot of Spectrum weapons, and we've even seen some Spectrum stance weapons too with the Gen 1 Christmas banner but I'm going to power creep it even more by making a Spectrum Breath skill, giving a plus 3 to each of Camilla's stats and granting a plus 1 special cooldown when the foe initiates combat. This helps further boost her balanced stat line and also makes her incredibly unique amongst other flyers, as currently only Sword and Axe flyers can get a conditional breath effect by inheriting Pledge Blade Plus or Huge Fan Plus. Moving on from one Norian Raw to another, next up we're going to be talking about the younger brother in the Norian Royal family, Leo. Now, Leo's base weapon actually isn't too bad for a Gen 1 unit, as Leo takes 30% less damage from the first attack made by a ranged foe, but the Refine is where his weapon really drops off in usefulness. The Refine is basically a conditional null follow-up, and that sounds great at first, until you see that the condition is only against ranged foes, and Leo has to be, have a higher defense than those attacking. And if you haven't seen, even with a super boon, Leo's defense is nothing to tell home about. For Leo's new weapon, I basically just supercharged his current refine, fixing the problems with it and adding a few new things here and there too. The base effect I gave Leo's plus 3 defense, just like Camilla so it's easier to proc his weapon's effect, especially with a super boon. I also kept the original effect but buffed the damage decrease from 30% to 50%, and swapped out the null follow up effect for a null C disrupt effect. I also increase the amount of the units that Leo can activate his effect against, by making the activation condition be if foes are ranged or if Leo has more defense than them. 
With a bit of investment, I think this will make Leo a much better unit. And if you add close count or close foil to him, he'll be taking down units left and right. For the refine, I took inspiration from Brave Ike. And by taking inspiration, I mean I literally just gave Leo a conditional Brave Ike's refine. Now Leo can reduce the damage from his foe's second attack onwards by 80%. And he also lets the opponent make a follow-up attack before he can counter-attack, in order to ensure that the foe gets the damage reduction as long as the unit's ranged or Leo has a high defense in them. Brave Ike's naturally the better out of the two, as his effect is unconditional, and he has way more skill options as an infantry unit. But Leo has a lot less speed, even with high merges, and will probably make the most out of this weapon effect a lot more often than Ike does. Even with the limited skill set, I really do think Leo can make this set shine. And I have a ton of build ideas that I wish I could use if this was Leo's actual refine. The final two characters in this video definitely have a couple of the most disappointing preferred weapons in Fey, with our number one spot possibly having the most disappointing preferred weapon by far. But before we talk about him, let's first talk about Titania from the Radiant series. When the update first got announced, I remember hearing Draconic Poleaxe and thinking it'd be a really cool weapon, but it would probably be some sort of preferred Poleaxe weapon that also had something to do with Draconic Aura or was effective against dragons. What we got, however, was a preferred Emerald Axe with a built-in res tactic, and I'm not really a fan of Triangle Adept weapons or tactic skills to be honest. For a new weapon, as much as I wanted to completely change everything, I figured I should at least keep the Triangle Adept portion as it's the base effect and she usually had an Emerald Axe in Fey anyway. Titania really doesn't have much of an attack stat, so for a base effect I gave her a plus 3 attack on top of her Triangle Adept 3 skill in order to boost her damage output a bit. I also gave her effective against cavalry and dragon foes like I mentioned before, since it's pretty unique to have a unit that's effective against the two types of units simultaneously, and it's also what I originally thought her weapon would be, so I felt like I had to include it somewhere. To top things off with a refine, I effectively gave her an enhanced swift breath, since cavalry and flyer units can't ready their specials as easily as infantry and armoured units due to their lack of skill options to assist with it. So I figured swift breath would help with that issue and also boost her best stats, speed and resistance a bit more too. Finally we have the unit that basically inspired me to start the series, and it's none other than the Crown Prince of Reneus himself, Ephraim. Honestly, I have no idea what IS was thinking with this weapon. Like, how can they make a Lord's preferred weapon be so terrible? Seekerman's Effect Refine is just Horn Attack 3, and a player phase Quick Repost where the unit has to be above 90% HP for it to work, and there's barely any skills currently in the game that would combo well with a condition like that, except for push skills and a new dive bomb skill, which is flyer restricted. For the new refine, I actually just kept all of Siegmund's base effects. I just made them better and made the weapon a bit more closer to the original weapon in Sacred Stones. Originally, it was a 17 might weapon that granted the unit 5 strength, and it was also effective against monsters too. Let's start with the new effects first. I added plus 3 attack to reference the strength bonus and high might Siegmund has, as well as making it effective against beast units to further reference the original weapon. Now to boost up the original fate effects. I gave Ephraim joint hone attack to start off with. Now Ephraim can give a little bit more of a boost to adjacent allies, and also appreciate a boost for himself as well. As for Ephraim's original refine, it reminded me of a BTEC Bold Fighter skill, so I figured why not just give him Bold Fighter? It makes Ephraim a lot more unique compared to other infantry lancers, by giving him a skill that his competition usually wouldn't have access to. Eliwood got Steady Impact, which is a usually a skill that he can't obtain, and he's also a main lord in Fey, so why can't Ephraim get a powerful skill like that too? Overall, this weapon was just meant to be, what if Sigmund was good? And just fix all of the flaws and making it more accurately represent the original weapon in Sacred Stones, making Ephraim stand atop of all answers, just as he dreamed to. With that, I think that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the first installment of my Refine series, and if you enjoyed it, let me know by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you want to see me make more of these overpowered weapons, let me know in the comments below and let me know which unit you'd like me to cover next and maybe I'll cover them for you in the next video if you enjoyed this one. I'll probably be rotating the refinement series in between other Fire Emblem series I have planned, as well as some Pokemon, anime and more series planned too. That's all for this video though, so I hope to see you guys soon my dudes. Bye!